Hi students, welcome to the set of video notes. We're going to be talking about the atom in this kind of lecture video note thing. Uh, the great thing about this is, is you are in control of these notes. You're in control of this video. If you ever need time to write things down, you know, maybe you uh, just want a little bit more time to write stuff down, you can always pause the video uh, to write stuff, stuff down. You can pause the video to think about what's going on. It's always good to process the information as we go through. Uh, if you've missed something, you can always scrub through the video backwards to go back to where you need to go. Or you could, you know, if you really need to you get this information you can always fast forward through the content that might seem a little bit boring uh, hopefully you haven't fast forwarded already but let's go ahead and get started about the atom so let's talk about the atom now make sure you have your notebook open to the appropriate page and that you're taking notes as we go along let's get started so first I want to talk about the atom by definition the atom is the smallest particle that makes up matter and still has distinct properties so there are things smaller than the atom but the atom itself, the atom in its entirety, is the smallest particle that makes up matter and that still has properties, distinct properties of matter. Atom comes from a term that means not to be cut or indivis indivisible. I like to think of atoms kind of like this. Atoms are the building blocks of matter. Now, what's the building blocks that we're really used to? Legos. Atoms are kind of like Legos. Legos, like atoms, can build anything right so we can take an atom or legos put things together and build bigger things so atoms can be put together to build things like cells when you take biology you'll learn a lot about cells well cells molecules those things are made of atoms rocks everything is made of atoms and eventually cells cells all about biology you make even bigger things you put a bunch of cells together and you make bigger things like creatures or rocks or water or substances so atoms are the fundamental building blocks of matter put enough together and you'll actually get something big let's go ahead and talk about the parts of an atom so here we're talking about the parts of an atom so atoms have kind of two main parts they have the nucleus now the nucleus of, is made up of even smaller parts and those two small things are called protons and neutrons so the nucleus of the atom the center the very dense center is made up of protons and neutrons now floating about the nucleus outside of the nucleus is this thing called the electron cloud now the electron cloud is made up of you guessed it electrons so there are smaller particles in the atom protons neutrons and electrons that make up the atom but the atom is made up of mainly a nucleus and an electron cloud exactly how big or what, you know, what's the deal with the electron, the nucleus, and the cloud? I want to give you an analogy here. So here we're at the Viking Stadium, and imagine you're sitting at the very outskirts, kind of the nosebleed section. Hey, it's what you can afford. Now go ahead and put your fingers up, and I want you to, here's a marble. Put this marble in your finger. Do you have it in your finger? Great. Now this marble represents the nucleus. We've kind of blown up the nucleus to be more our size. So pretend this marble represents the nucleus with protons and neutrons in it. Now what I want you to do is to take that marble and flick it. Go ahead and, and through three seconds, go ahead and through, flick it. Three, two, one, flick. All right, you just totally flicked it, really super powered, all the way to the middle of the stadium. Now it's, you can't see it, it's there. It's extremely small, but that, that nucleus is right in the middle of the Viking Stadium, right? So it's right there in the middle. Now, how far away do you think the electron cloud would be from that nucleus? How big do you think that electron cloud takes up? Well, if you said all the way back to where you're sitting, you'd be exactly right. The electron cloud takes up that much space, even though the nucleus is that small. Atoms are relatively big, even though they're really, really, really small. And what I mean by that is atoms are mostly empty space. There's lots of empty space that encompasses an atom that makes them big even though they're not really big. They're, in fact, really small. So here's kind of an analogy for you. If you removed all the empty space from atoms, and you don't need to write this down, but it's kind of interesting to, to, to know, understand. If you removed all the empty space from atoms, the entire world human population would fit into about the size of a volume of a sugar cube. We are made up of a lot of empty space. Uh, and most of that empty space is because the electron clouds are really big. Now, think about that in terms of size. That means atoms are also really small. If that's if all we're talking about is the nucleus and we only take up the size of a sugar cube, we're, atoms are extremely small. So exactly how small or big is an atom? Well, let's, let me give you a comparison here. So here's a comparison about the size of an atom. Now, what we're looking at right here is not an atom. It's actually just, it's a speck of dust. So if you were to take a speck of dust, a speck of dust by size is halfway between the size of the earth and an atom. 
I, that just blows my mind. I mean, literally, like, take your finger and pick up a speck of dust, right? Really touch any surface. You're picking up a speck of dust. Can you see that speck of dust? Probably not. I mean, you might be able to, but really, specks of dust are really small. Now, atoms, the speck of dust is halfway between the size of an atom and the Earth. That's the scale we're talking about here. Atoms are, in, are really, 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 really small, and they don't take up a lot of space. Let's talk about subatomic particles. I want to go a little bit more in-depth. So subatomic particles are the protons, neutrons, and electrons. You might want to pause the video to, to you know, actually write this um, table down, but I want to talk about the, the subatomic particles a little bit more in-depth. So proton and neutron, we talked about their location before. They're found inside the nucleus. Electron, on the other hand, is found outside of the nucleus in the electron cloud. What I really want to focus on right now are these masses and charges. Now, the proton and neutron have a mass of one AMU each. Now, what is an AMU? An AMU stands for atomic mass unit. And it's kind of a made-up unit, but basically, scientists just to go easy on themselves just said, all right, here's a proton. We're just going to say that it weighs one, one AMU or one proton. Now, the neutron is very close to that. Basically, protons and neutrons weigh about the same. And so they just called them one each because they come in whole numbers. So AMU just stands for a unit of an atomic mass unit. Now, look at the electron. The electron cloud doesn't weigh anything. Well, it does, but it's so small that it's so insignificant. So we say it practically weighs zero AMU. So that brings me to the electron, cl uh, that, the electron cloud. The electron cloud has no mass. But look at the charge. The electron cloud brings negative charge. So the electron cloud has no mass, or the electrons have no mass, but they bring in negative charge. Now let's talk about the nucleus. Now the nucleus has positive charge from the protons and zero charge from the neutrons. So the nucleus actually has all the mass, right? The protons are one, the neutrons are one, they have all the mass, and the total charge of the nucleus is plus and zero. So Really, the total charge is a positive charge. So the electron cloud is a negative charge with no mass, and the nucleus has a positive charge with all the mass. And this will be important as we go along, but we're going to talk about more in-depthly how protons, neutrons, and electrons affect the atom. But this is one way they do. Protons and neutrons add mass where electrons have no mass. Protons add positive charge. Neutrons add no charge. We say it's neutral and electrons have negative charge. And these are all things you really need to know. Well, that is the end of the video. That's the end of the notes. It was really simple, and I hope you wrote down a lot of things. You know, definitely write down your inspirations. What you could do right now is go back and make sure, go check the learning targets for um, this unit and make sure that you have learned a few things and that you're understanding a few things you need to know uh, because the things you learned here deal with the learning targets that are required for the course. But thanks for sticking with me and my goofiness and uh, I hope this was beneficial to you. I hope you took really good notes. If not, you're welcome. And if you really need to understand something again, you're welcome to rewind and watch things over again. But good luck. See you guys next time.